Welcome back to another Futures Trading Recap for Tuesday, November 19, 2024. The time is 8.19 a.m. Eastern as I'm making this pre-market part of today's video. This is where I show the levels of potential support and resistance in the SPY that I've identified for today. During the open session, these levels will serve as a basis for how we enter trades in the E-mini futures. After the closing bell, we revisit this same chart to talk about any trades taken during the day and look at how the day's profit or loss stacks up in the bigger picture by examining a tracking system where every trade, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, is logged. This provides meaningful metrics of how this futures trading strategy works. So normally, I'll provide a little insight on what I think the SPY is going to do in the near term in like a forecast analysis section. I did not provide that in last night's video, linked above, and I said that I would do that this morning. So here is an hourly chart of the SPY with a trend line drawn on. I believe the area around that trend line and slightly below is an important place the bulls need to stay above. If we start seeing hourly candles below that and below 584, then the bears might be able to push price down some. Yesterday, I had good reasons to be on the long side and I was able to pull about 30 points from the market in a long position that I took. But today, I'm not so enamored with one direction over the other. They fell during the overnight session, and currently they're still below 587. I do not see any clear signals which direction that they might go once the open session gets underway. So trading the E-minis, if the SPY comes into these levels, I'm going to need more validation from other things, at least in my book. Last week, I mentioned that if the IWM fell, they would likely find support in this zone between the dashed lines. They did. They bounced as designed, but not as much as the SPY did yesterday. They seem a little weaker than the SPY right now and they're already below a trend line, which has significance on their own chart. So I'm still keeping an eye on both markets. Speaking of trend lines, you probably noticed the upsloping line in the light blue color on the SPY chart, this one minute chart that we're using for trading the futures during the day. This is an area that looked somewhat important the last few trading days, and then they bounced off of it already in the pre-market. So I believe there's something to that. They could do that again, and if they don't, and we see closes below that area and the other levels below that, especially 584, I have 583.98 as my lowest level, then lower prices are likely coming. Whatever happens today, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell, and we'll talk about it. Catch you on the other side. We're back after 9 p.m., and we got a bounce in the SPY today, where the trend line and the level at 585.10 converged turned out to be the launching point where they took off today. So how would you have traded the five levels that were hit today? First, I'm going to bring the levels in toward price with the five cent buffer. That little trick came in handy today with one trade in particular. If you had an order in the system to activate a market order in the E-minis to buy as soon as the SPY hit 584.03, you would have had a nice clean fill down at this level. Because look, they found a low of 584.03 to the penny. So let's go over all the trades. The first one was a long trade at 585.15. After the 9.45 a.m. candle closed, they kept falling, so you would have bought at the level. They kept falling into the next level before any type of fumble signal materialized, so you bought again and averaged in across these two levels. That new position across the two levels gave a quick and solid base hit as they pulled up out of there. Now they're up to 5.86.15. I'll just say that I liked the way they got out of this area around the convergence of that trend line and the level there, so I wasn't interested in selling in front of that at that time at least. So I did not take the trade at 586.15 and any of the other levels above for that matter, but we'll look at my trade later. We're treating this as a process so our playing by the rules tracking log stays accurate. That means each level that I put on the board in the morning is treated as if it were traded per the rules of the strategy. So you're going short at 586.15. When this trade was almost 17 points out of the money, it fumbled and was reversed, pretty much erasing the gains of that first trade. But on the reversal, you would have pulled a four-point base hit as they kept climbing. The next level up at 588.13 was a near miss. They came within 10 cents, pulled away. That's your signal that that trade is probably not going to work. So you just let it go. But they came back down into it from above, and that's a recycle trade. Perfect base hit or more off, off that bounce. The next level here, if you sold at 590.05, that would, that would have meant you were out of the money for a little while. And if I were in this trade, I would have been ready and willing to sell again at 591, 15 or so, because the timing was getting good for a pullback at this point, but they came up short. But no worries, because playing this trade by the rules meant you just stayed in this, gave it some time, and waited for the base hit when they finally did provide the pullback. 
So there's your playing by the rules trades for today. Enough points to end the day in the green slightly. My trade was a little interesting because of a calculation issue on my chart in the middle of the trade. I bought at the 585.10 level, uh, and I had limit orders over on the E-mini charts when they were above, coming back down into it. I kind of jumped the gun. I had an extra order over here, and I was filled. So I was long four at this point. In retrospect, I would have been more comfortable with four total contracts across these two levels. Bought two here, bought two down there. But by the time they got down to the 584 level, I was six long. I bought another two down here, so you can see that happening. So I'm long six. I took a $1,500 profit off with four of the contracts. You'll see, and that's kind of where the glitch happened. The new break even on my two remaining contracts should have been around 5887 or so in the E-minis, not down below like you'll see in a minute. So when they came back down pretty fast and stopped me out, my trailer was actually out of the money when I got stopped out. So from where price was, I actually gave back a few hundred dollars instead. And at that point, I made the decision to step back and not trade any more levels. For me, if I'm able to pocket a grand or more by 10 in the morning, I'd just rather call it a day and do something else. So it turned out to be a good decision to not trade the next level up. I avoided that fumble, but it also meant that I missed the other trades up higher. And at about noon or so, I stopped the recording. I was long gone by the time the SPY got to the top levels on the board. I can scrub ahead here and show you. That was my morning trade. So 12, 12 o'clock or so, I was done. The only thing I'm really going to point out on the daily chart here is where they closed. So the high of this candle back on the 15th, that was last Friday, the high is 590.20. They closed at 590.30, at least according to TradeStation here. So I don't think it's coincidence they closed right above the high of this. Now, this whole breakdown area, they, they can still climb this. They're kind of in an area they can go either direction. Yesterday, when I wanted to be on the long side and was able to ride up 30 points or so, it had something to do with the fact that the timing was good on the way down the previous week, part of that week. And this doji candle here coming into the 100 period moving average and volume was pretty decent. I didn't want to see any two hour closes below the low of this, but they had enough support to fight that 584 area. And of course, by tomorrow morning, I'll have more refined levels based on what I see in the overnight session. We're at our tracking logs now. Here's the playing by the rules log. I'm not going to read all this, but you can read it all five levels and how they were treated. So washing out most of that 16 and three quarter point fumble by the time we got to the upper levels, pulled you back into the green if you're treating each level based on the rules. Then my trades were uh, averaged in across these two, and it was really just 4.1 net points. I was total six at that point. I ended up with slightly above $1,200 before commissions. So that's a wrap for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you found some value in it. And of course, you know that tomorrow morning I'll have new levels on the board and another game plan, and we'll do this all over again. Stay profitable and have a great rest of your day.